This is Coombe Cassius for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. We're in Manchester. What part of Manchester we're in? Um, Hathbury. Okay. Obviously, if you're from Manchester, you'll know where that is. Yeah, I don't know. Of course. Obviously. Down south. Of course. Uh, Mr. Brown Flash himself, self about. How are you, mate? I'm good, man. How are you? Yeah. Good, good. Y your uncle just talk, told me some horror stories from around there on the way here. So that's why I'm looking Yeah, there's only right. um, two ways on this estate. <laughs> and um, as you can see, you knew the kids of it already don't, they don't even know you, but they can they smell somebody new. Really? But it's a nice estate, man. This makes, you, makes me the man who I am today. I know, where, I know where I come from. Yeah. I'm grounded. I know, where, I know what it's like to be at the rock bottom. So it builds me as a fighter. As you can smell something, something some sort of potent smell is coming from over there, but it is what it is, man. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> yeah. We'll leave it there. Yeah, yeah. We'll leave it there. Now, Zelf, obviously, you were meant to be fighting on uh, the, car, the copper box next weekend. Uh, the show has had to be pulled due to various couple of reasons. Obviously, Teti went off the build, Daniel yep. Dubois was ill, so they've decided to kind of move some of the fighters off there to a show they're doing at York Hall, yep. uh, Frank Warren, on the 24th of February. So, not too long to wait. No, um, we, we prepared well anyway for the last fight, so it's just an extra two weeks added on, an extra two weeks of more hard work, and is what it is. Hopefully fight for some sort of title, 10 rounds, I'm ready for anyone or whoever it is or whatever it is. Obviously last time out, uh, very impressive with your, your fourth round stoppage of uh, Chris Connell and you kind of want to build on that, don't you? I yeah, of course. eager to get in straight after that. Of course, man. Now I just want the big names, man. Whoever's in my weight division, I want. I want to win the British title. Um, I think Sambo and Max Hughes are fighting for that. So I want the winner of that. I just want the big guys now. Whoever, whoever they are, wherever they are. And that's not in a disrespectful way. That's in a competitive way. Do you feel like you've done that building part of your career now and you're ready to really kind of make them steps now? Yeah, of course. I've had a lot of fights. I've had, um, learned a lot from this boxing game through sparring, good fighters, having a lot of fights. So I'm past that now. I'm just ready. I feel, I feel that I'm ready for anything. I know you've already had this and you're going to continue to get on to this. And it's an interesting topic that you and Mr. Leon Woodstock, and I know we've, we've kind of touched on it before, but... I mean, you two are friends, but that's business. Yeah, of course. If the um, fight happens, it happens. If we cross paths, we cross paths. But at this, at this moment in time, I'm just focusing on who's in front of me. And whoever's got the British title. Like I said, if it happens, it happens. What a, what a great fight it will be, man. But he's a good fighter, and I'm a good fighter. So we're from the same kind of background, similar people. Got nothing but, but respect for the guy, but... It's just business, and if it happens, it happens. What a great fight it will be, but it's no sweat on me, and it's no sweat on him. Is that something that could be built into something bigger? Um, it could possibly. See me, I'm not a talker. I do my talking in the ring, man. I'm old school, so you won't catch me talking about anything because I just, people can say what they want. It doesn't bother me. I let man do the talking, as as um, the proof's in the pudding. Most fights I have, it's knockout of the month for, so I don't. I don't do that social media rubbish. They can build it, they can build it. I had a bit of fire to it, but that's about it. But if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm 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 confident on my side of the party. So he's a good fighter, man. Is that the next step for you, the, the target, the British title? Is that what you want to kind of yeah, um, go for? I think my course me to defend the belt one more time, just to see what it's like, just so you can train to see what it's like to defend the belt because no point winning the belt and not defending it so whatever he wants me to do but I want to win the British title and I want to fight for it and I believe I'm going to win it so whatever my uncle tells me to do I'm going to do but that's on my next my next agenda is the British title but I think he wants me to defend the, um, my belt how I will defend it and then the British title then. I know we've kind of we've, I've spoke to you before I think we were in, in Leeds and you had your uncle there, and it's kind of we see the relationship between yourself and Pat. And you know, I think you joked and said, Look, if he says jump, you say how yeah, high, and that's that kind of the mentality that you're putting your kind of your career for your uncle to, to guide you. Yeah, of course, he's been in this boxing game before I was even born. He knows it in and out, he knows the crooks, he knows the cons, he knows the, he knows the game. So I'm leaving it to him because he knows. He knows what to do, he knows how to guide my career, he knows how to better my career. So, it's on him, I'll have an input. 
yeah, don't get me wrong, give me an opinion like what you think about this and I'll just say what do you think, you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong if I don't think if something's right, which which anything wouldn't be right because he's the man. Um, but yeah, he's guided, he, he's been taught by the best brand new, so I'm just happy to, to be in the situation I'm in with him. You come from a place here in Manchester which is steeped in history and has had so many good fighters and you know you're kind of going to be on the, the next wavelength of uh, the next generation of fighters to kind of crack it from Manchester. Yep. Yeah man it feels good and I feel like a lot of the people around here we're all, we're all a community so everybody that I know wants the best for me and when like hopefully Collar doesn't grow, go soon but when he when he goes hopefully the people that followed him will, will follow me because I believe I'm the next the next one in Manchester I believe I am I believe I'm going to be one of the next ones in boxing for British boxing but that's another that's another league but at this moment in time I believe I'm the next one in Manchester because I'm doing what what should be done and I'm not and I'm not cocky or arrogant with it you know what I mean so a lot of people like me for me because I'm real people like realness and I keep humble I, I, people see me running around there you don't see me running in no gyms you know what I mean? They see me, they beat me. They know that I'm, I'm a Manchester proud person. But, I mean, it's interesting because, like I said, there is the likes of Anthony Crawler and, and Terry Flanagan, Flanagan yeah. the current fighters that kind of at the, the top and, and fighting at the top. But, you know, you said yourself that there's going to come a time where those kind of guys... I mean, Terry Flanagan probably, you know, he's an unbeaten... Yeah, you'll have a bit. I think Former world champion longer, fighting yeah, for yeah, another yeah. world title, different weight now. So he's maybe in a in a different situation. Anthony Quala, we don't know how many fights he's got left, mm -hmm. but we're kind of yeah, sort of Manchester crying out for the next generation. Yeah, of generation. course, and I, I believe in that. Um, like I said, I'm real man, um, and that's what I believe I will be the next because I'm I'm showing all the community love. I don't think I'm better than if we all breathe the same air, we all bleed the same blood. So I'm just a normal guy that's doing something he loves doing. So I believe that I've got the whole Manchester behind me. Everyone's asking when my next fight in Manchester. Every time I fight, it's just packed. You know what I mean? So the new generation will see me as their up and coming, you know what I mean? So I believe I'm going to be the next Manchester fighter. Don't get me wrong, there's loads. There's loads of Manchester fighters coming up and through, but I just believe in me and I don't think they've got what I've got. And that's not me being arrogant. That's me being real, man. I've not got that amateur style coming from amateurs to pros where it's a bit rugged. So there's Alpha Barrett, there's not a fighter out there like me, unless you go to America, you know what I mean? But I believe I'm going to be the next Manchester fighter. Should we go on a tour of your estate? Let's do it, man. Should we do it? Got my flip-flops on, but okay, it's fine. Right. I'm trying to get no one's like houses and stuff in, but... <laughs> so how long have you lived there? All my life. I used to live on the other side of the estate. This is the world famous um, embassy club. Okay. Um, it's a state, man. Um, it's just, it, it was just full of kids, full of um, mixed race kids and black kids on this estate, and we had a, we had a good time, man. Growing up, we used to stand there, throw apples at cars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, this used to own here. I think this is partly built because of us, because we was bad kids. All right. Okay. And um, don't get me wrong, it's good for the kids now. But it's a bit too late for us, for our generation, because we were just bad, we had nothing to do. Um, like I said, we'd get apples off the trees and throw them at cars. We'd play football, this used to be grass. Um, I've had great memories here. And, uh, and like I said, until my boxing career is done, I won't move from here because it, it makes you realise where you come from. And some people, they drown in their own success, which is natural. Of course, you're getting a lot more money. Of course, you're going to be living different, eating different, but... You need to realise where you come from. The people in you, the people that you met at the bottom, are always going to be here. So you, I want to bring you with me because when I go to the top, we're staying there. So I'd like to bring everybody with me. All these people, they're not the richest people, but they save their money up, and you, and you buy tickets to watch me. And I'm so fortunate to have that. Do you see yourself kind of having that same mentality as you go on through your career? Because you're still young, and your outlook and perspective on life does change regardless of whatever but you seem to kind of have a fixed attitude towards more you know more importantly where you're from and kind of not forgetting that of course my uncle always told me you can't buy respect that's something can't be bought you cannot have all the money in the world but if nobody respects you it's pointless having it so 
I'm, I'm a people person. I got raised around there by my mum and by my friends. Having good friends around me taught me how to be a man in a way, like um, how to act, how to talk. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a people person. This estate is my estate. I, I love all the people on there. Just, I'm happy to be from here, you know what I mean? I've not had the finest things in life, but my mum tried. And now it's my time to get back to my mum. One day my mum's never gonna work. Even though she loves working, she's got a good job, she works in a school, but one day that's my goal, for my mum never to work again. She would love to work, but, so, and, and to help everyone around there, all my people. Psst. That's what I've been raised, that's what, that's just what, it's just in me, just to raise up, to try and help anyone around me, because a lot of people have helped me, so, just to try and give back, basically, even to the kids in the youth zone. Just five minutes of your time, just talking to them. Just, like, wow, what's that, just spoke to me. To me, I'm thinking, I'm, on, I'm just like you. Why, are you, why are you so amazed? It's because I fight, it's my job. But that's, my, that's the end product to um, give back. Because when I was younger, no one gave me. I had, I had friends on this estate that we used to share. If you go chippy, you'd be four forks in the, in the chippy thing because we were all sharing, you know what I mean? So it's nothing to dwell about. It's not, I'm not saying it's for people to say sorry, feel sorry for me. I'm just, it's just life, it's realness. So I'd love to give back even to all my friends, man. Hopefully give them some sort of job role. If, if I can give them anything, because they've helped me the long way, even the oldest on the estate, still to this day, now, oh, do you need any money? Do you need this? It's like, no, I'm okay, thank you, I appreciate it. But it's just the love that this community has for each other. You can't, it can't be bought, you know what I mean? So don't get me wrong, we've all had some sad times, lost people around there. But it's a part, I think that's God's plan. It makes you grow as a fighter and as a person to, to stride more, you know what I mean? So. My goal is to get back on this estate. How old are you? 24. 24. I don't look it. I look young, man. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like, I've had to grow up as a man from young, man. Like, there's only certain things your mum can teach you. And then I've had to go and venture out myself and see things and think, oh, I'm not going to do that. And I've never smoked in my life. I watched all my friends do it and I think, that's not me. I don't drink. So it's just partly like, this is why I'm so, so knowledgeable because I've had to grow up. Certain things like I can't go and tell my mum's for him <laughs> apples at cars and stuff, you know what I mean? So she might know once she watches this video, yeah, she might know, but yeah, <laughs> but like I said, just just a kid doing daftness basically. But I've learned a lot, I've learned a lot, hell of a lot. I've learned how to get back, be a through my uncle back. Mm. I know it's an old cliche, sorry. sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry, I know it's an old cliche, you know, people kind of say that. You know, boxing has kind of taken them a, a, a different direction in their life, or saved their life, or anything. But in a lot, of, a lot of cases, it's kind of, it's kind of true because it, it, true. it gives you that direction. It's obviously given you the direction. Of course, all the best fighters were, were poor, or uh, they didn't have the best, best side in life. You know what I mean? Um, Joe Frazier, Van der Holyfield, Ray Leonard when he first started boxing. There's loads of fighters that 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 boxing has saved a life. You know what I mean? It saved my life because. Most of the people around there, they've been to jail, or the, the people have died because they lost friends around there, or up to no good. And I've just seen, I seen a bit of a light when I was an amateur, and I liked it. And I just thought, you know what, this is this is for me. This 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 life, this boxing life is for me. It's going to pay off. And this is why I've got good friends because people are telling me, my friends are like, "Does Pat know you out? Are you eating that? You're to eat that. Does Pat know you eating that? You know what I mean? I've, I've had." I give it to my friends, tell them, yo, I'm allowed to be out late, man. What are you talking about? Nah, I'm ringing Pat. I've got good friends, I've got good people. Normally, friends are ones, or so called friends are the ones telling you, oh, come out, come and do this. My friends don't do that. When I'm dieting, they don't ring me, because they know I'm dieting. After ring me, we'll go to this place called The Leaf in Cheating Hill. So I've got good people, when you've got good people backing you, man, it's like, you can't, I, can't, I can't ask for more. This is why I'm so anxious to get to get a, a fight in Manchester, to give back to everybody, because everybody's give to me. So I want to give back to them. I want to win a title here or defend something in Manchester for my people, you know what I mean? My present to say, look, and you know what? I'd even, half of the people, I'd even I'd even pay for their tickets, half of them, because they're all off this estate and they've all helped me in a way, you know what I mean? They all buy Box Nation, I'm fighting on Box Nation and and they all buy tickets when I fight. So I've done it in one of my last shows, my Uncle Pat, when my fight got cancelled, someone got injured in, on the show and my fight I couldn't fight. I give all the tickets back, people who paid, 
they didn't want they didn't want they didn't, they didn't want their tickets back because they know it's for a good cause but we give all the people the tickets back to, for the next show so like that's my goal to get a show in manchester and just to to give back to everybody on there man you seem like someone that you won't stop until you've become world champion no i believe i'm going to be a world champion not in an arrogant way just i work too hard i've got a gift from god and i'm not going to stop i'm not going to stop i owe it to everyone i owe it to my mum i owe it to my brother my arm my cousin in this boxing game now i don't it's not it's not about me that's too easy if it's about me 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 becoming the best like whatever doing whatever it's too easy and it's about my mum now it's about making her feel happy again like it's about giving back to, to the people it's not about me it, that's too easy if it's about you boxing then it's, it's too easy you know what i mean i've got i've got a lot of people to give back to my family my uncle pat a lot my brothers like so this boxing thing people are relying on me you know what i mean so that's more that's more strive to be the best all right i can see the title for your book already from throwing apples to winning world exactly, titles exactly exactly and you said it first man and this is what we used to do we used to stand right here and like do the apple tree we just shake it off and, it's just, and you know it was, it was bad because we used to get the nice cars because you know they chase us if you get a rubbish car you'd be like oh they're not going to chase you if you see a bm i'm not going to lie i was at the back though because i was too scared my mum would have whooped me but that's why they call me the flash from young because i was fast man <laughs> You get them kids that the mums think really bother about, so they get caught by the police. Me, mm -mm. I go in and be like, "Did you good at? Yeah, man, it was okay, mum. Go to play PlayStation." Because we all used to look the same. All the kids around there, no, no one could get the blame. So, but memories, man, and this is this is what's going to make me become the best. All right. Well, this is Zelfa Barrett. Thank you very much for uh, talking to IFL TV today and uh, a little mini tour of the estate. <laughs> um, and listen, we'll definitely catch up with you ahead of. Uh, February 24th yep. so uh, best of luck in the rest of your camp yeah, man, thank you man nice one alright top man, yeah, man.